So I saw this VFX shot of uh, ground collapsing that was done in Houdini and I thought we could do it in Blender. Try to do it in Geometry Nodes and uh, this is my version. It's all procedural, the cracks are procedural and uh, the trench that is created after is also procedural. If you look closely, you see that uh, the trench is following the fracture as well. So if I go to the curves that are generating the cracks, if I wanted, say, another crack, maybe from this side, that is something we could easily do and uh, we can offset the animation of these uh, by just offsetting the animation of the curves. You can have it start there and that also creates its own crack and its own trench that follows uh, that path. If you want to get the project files, you can get them on my Patreon page and on my Gumroad page. First thing we're going to do is fracture our ground. So I'll make a few subdivisions, extrude this and uh, make sure you recalculate normals, use the cell fracture to fracture. I can have the source limit to something like 1000 and noise to one, you can set up a new collection and then hit okay. Uh, make sure these fractures are in our collection, call it X. We can set up the curves that are going to help us fracture this. So to do that, I'm just going to use a basic curve. Uh, it's going to start here, go in any direction I want. I'm going to set up some geometry nodes. I want this to use a trim curve uh, so that we can trim it for the animation. Expose that, change this to a mesh, give this a curve circle as the profile, just like that. And uh, we can expose this radius and use a set radius, set curve radius. Uh, it should be before this. Use a spline parameter. This factor to be used as the set radius so I can have this animated. So at frame one and at frame zero. I just like that. If I want another curve or another crack, I just duplicate this. I can have the cursor at the end here, at the tail. So I can rotate this and I can offset these keyframes to change the, tim the timing of the cracks. And even add another one. Okay, just like that. Now we can have this in a collection called it curves hide this curves collection and uh, our fractures just like that call this f's now i can add a plane this is going to hold our geometry nodes i want to bring in our fractures collection you can see how that looks i'm um, actually we separate the fractures I'm going to use a simulation zone to simulate gravity so i uh, use a set position a set position here and add some negative value and this should fall down. It's usually easier to work with points than instances. So I'm going to turn these instances to points just like this. I can bring in the curves, uh, make sure I'm using relative and uh, I want to use the distance of the points from these curves to determine what particles get the gravity. So I can use our uh, geometry proximity and get the distance. Uh, since this works with meshes, I need to realize these instances. So to work on the animation more clearly, what I'm going to do is just offset these so that they are at their final form. And uh, then I can also change the display to wireframe so that I can see through them. And we can go back to our instances. So we have our particles falling down. We have our curves. We have realized them. Now what we want to do is use this distance as the velocity. So if I push it as the velocity and I look at the particles now, you can see that we are influencing the particle's position depending on their proximity to this. And now we can use a map range to flip this around. So I'll just do one uh, here, one here, zero, and uh, you can change this value so that the particles only close to the meshes are moving. And uh, now we don't want them to stop like that. To have them continuously fall, like we're seeing in the animation here, what we can do is use a store named attribute, call this move, and uh, you can bring that in as a named attribute, and uh, use that here. And what we're going to do is just add, add this to the move attribute, and then re-add it to itself, and that should give us that motion. I like that. But uh, we need to multiply this by a negative value so that this can act as gravity instead. And uh, we can change the distance, how close the particles, which particles move by adjusting this distance, just like that. So if we go back to our curves, we can bring back the offset. 
and come back to this and uh, look at that everything is working perfectly from there we can turn this back into instances so instance on points and the instances we want to use are these here so the original particles we had now make sure you turn on pick instance so that we have that let me use a reroute node here the playback yeah you can see that the particles are falling down we are seeing a lot of gaps in here which wasn't in the original collection this collection so to remove that all we have to do is use a set position here and use a combine xy to reset that position and uh, they will come back to their normal position and you can see everything is falling as expected so we need a really really large area for this instead of fracturing a large plane what you can do is come here uh, let's add a reroute node here and duplicate this collection so if i transform this on the uh, i need to go back to frame one if i transform this on the x and join the original collection back to itself you will notice that these curves also work on the duplicated version very well so i can again duplicate make a duplicate of this so i can have another one there make another copy maybe a copy of this at this time on the y and uh, yeah so you can make it as large as you want and maybe just add another transform here to just recenter everything and you can see that works so that's what i did here instead of fracturing a large area you can see the different chunks so this the original fractured piece a very small piece i translated it and then joined it to have a large area like this and uh, when the fracturing is happening you don't really see that there is any seams or anywhere turn these into instances i gave them the same animation so they they can fall depending on that and i instance the particles uh, the other thing i did here was added some random rotation to these particles so a random random rotation random value can just be a vector you can see but we need to make sure that only the particles close to the curves are rotated so we can use our vector math and scale this rotation by the moving attribute here so i can actually just export this out and uh, yeah you can see we get that nice rotation uh, everything else was just detailed from here so i wanted to create these trenches procedurally so what i did is created a bounding box actually let me show you how i did that from the particles here i created a bounding box box and uh, that extends as the particles increase because bounding box just covers all the elements in it so but i didn't want it to be expanding so i deleted the bottom first so i just did a uh, delete uh, based on the normal direction uh, if you use a dot product for the normals facing up you can actually you can use a negative value negative one to get the top faces that are not moving and that's what we want subdivide this mesh quite a few times you can use a set position based off at this moving value as well the reason it's not working is because this bounding box is considered to be different geometry from this so it's not uh, really getting this value so you need to come back here and just use this value here yeah directly like that but it's a math node to push it multiply it with a negative value to push it down now you can use our a ramp to adjust this now you can also use a blur node to kind of smoothen the edges a bit you can join these together for some reason blender is hanging so yeah that's what i did I created a bounding box and uh, deleted the bottom part subdivided the mesh and actually in this version i just extruded the faces instead of just pushing them down but uh, using the same technique of using the distance from the curves to do that so basically the same thing 
guess here uh, I wanted to have better subdivisions and uh, you know here this blender is freezing uh, not sure why but uh, I extruded these based on the proximity of the curve and uh, shade smooth I uh, deleted uh, the extra parts that I were not needed for the trench and then added more subdivision uh, the subdivisions were so that I can add some displacement and that is basically just using a normal map and uh, running that into the offset and I'm just using if I just disable this for a second you can see that I'm using the noise to add detail into the normal map to get that extra detail so you can see my noise is stretched very well for a cliff like this and the reason for that is that uh, in the texture coordinates if we can look at that normally the textures are not stretched but if you use the position as the coordinates for the noise and just scale the z component you can really get some nice stretched noise uh, so uh, this is just to adjust the influence of the noise uh, then this multiply i didn't want any noise to be applied in the z direction so i added that multiply to just uh, remove any z offset then I joined that to the rest. You also notice that uh, my chunks are a bit detailed. If I bring back these subdivisions, my fractures are a bit more detailed there. And uh, I did that in the same trick of using a noise texture and applying it to these chunks. I didn't want the top part of these chunks to have noise. I s isolated the instances that we are moving and uh, you can do that by using the, the proximity attribute and then I separated the top faces. So the top faces and the bottom faces. So these are the top, uh, these are the bottom piece. And this is the top piece that I didn't want to, to be displaced with noise. So this is the part that I wanted to be displaced. So I realized it, subdivided it. So here, realized, subdivided and added the noise and uh, shed smooth merge them together so that we have a flat piece and a displacement joined everything back together and uh, anyway that's it thank you for watching if you want to see the project files all links are going to be in the description if you want to be a professional blender vfx artist these four add-ons are going to be a must for you there will be a time saver in your vfx journey the first one is the physical starlight and atmosphere because in vfx or in any type of render you will always need a background and uh, the physical starlight and atmosphere provides that in a form of skies atmosphere and clouds the clouds can be animated and directed to your liking to create the perfect backdrop the next thing you're going to need is a library of trees and vegetation because rarely will you make a scene without any form of vegetation and the botanical add-on provides that and more you also get small rocks uh, dead vegetation and a lot of other things that you might want for your scenes and then the third add-on i recommend for vfx artists is the rbd lab they updated it to include metasoft which is a new approach for handling metallic deformation in blender which blender doesn't really have a solution for so this is a great solution on top of the other tools they have already for vfx like fracturing destruction and cloth simulation an add-on and i would really recommend is the geoscatter add-on this is really powerful for scattering objects and elements in case you are trying to cover a large area of your scene with different objects all links are going to be in the description thank you for watching